Welcome everybody here in the room and on our live stream to this press conference from the annual meeting of the World Economic Forum 2016 in Davos. I think it is fair to say that the topic of the refugee and migrant crisis has been one of the most important and most discussed topics here in Davos this year. And for good reason, um, we are facing an unprecedented crisis. Um, we are very honored and happy to have an expert panel on that uh, subject uh, here today. And let me quickly introduce you, uh, our panelists. To my immediate left, we're joined by William Lacey Swing. He's the Director General of the International Organization for Migration, IOM, based in Geneva. Right at the center of our panel, um, we're joined by Hamdi Ulukaya, the Chief Executive Officer of uh, Chobani. And last but not least, we're, we're joined by James Barber, who's the President of UPS International. Uh, thank you for all the panelists to be here, and um, uh, Director General, let me jump directly to you. Um, share with us what is the situation we're facing, uh, please. Thank you very much. Uh, let me uh, do a kind of a scene setter, if I may. Um, at uh, our organization, we believe that based on the statistics we've seen in the demography, that uh, large-scale migration is, is already and will remain a mega trend of this century. That's based primarily on the fact that more people are underway than ever before. That goes back to the 20th century, the first time in human history when the world's population quadrupled. Uh, therefore, uh, given that and the number of crises uh, from the western bulge of Africa across to the Himalayas with very little stability in between, we're going to be faced with more people being forced to move, about 60 million now, 20 million refugees, 40 million migrants. So our thesis is that migration is not a crisis or problem to be solved, but a human reality that responsible governments and people have to manage, which puts it in a more positive note. So we think it's uh, large-scale migration is inevitable, given the demography and the other drivers, including disasters. It is necessary, given the demographic deficit, if jobs are to be filled, skills to be available, and economies to flourish. And finally, it is highly desirable if we have the right policies that are humane, responsible, and non-political. Unfortunately, migration is highly political these days. And instead of solving the problem, sometimes we're simply looking at a short-term security solution which will not manage such a complex question. So I've, perhaps I can leave it with that except to say that two, I think there are two major challenges. Number one, we're going to have to find a way to change the migration narrative, and therefore I'm very grateful for this opportunity, because right now it's toxic. We need to go back to a migration narrative that is historically accurate. Most of our countries, including the one I come from, the United States, we were built on the backs of migrants and with the brains and talents of migrants. Secondly, we're going to have to learn to manage inexorably growing, multicultural, multi-ethnic, and multi-religious diversity. To do that, we have to move the conversation from a discussion about identity to one about can we have common interests or shared values. I'll just leave it with that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director General. Hamdi, um, the Director General just mentioned the importance of, of, of immigrants to the U.S. You, you uh, moved to the U.S. 20 years ago yourself, so it's no surprise that you have a keen awareness for the topic, but you're also showing great leadership from the business sector in that area. Share with us what are you doing. I understand you're launching a new initiative here in Davos. Tell us about it. Um, what are you trying to achieve, and how are you going about it, please? Thank you. Um, you're absolutely right. My background, it really helps me to be sensitive on the issue. Uh, and, and because I'm from Turkey, because I'm from the region, um, I, am, I am more close to uh, what's happening uh, you know, in the region. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur uh, from New York. I started my business 20 years ago, uh, seven years ago in upstate New York. Um, a, a brand called Chobani uh, is a one leading brand in America. I, uh, I enjoyed having a platform to put my ability into the work as someone moved from another part of the country, uh, world. And the examples are many. Today, uh, quite a big percentage of Fortune 500 countries are either 
run or studded by immigrants or refugees. Um, so, of course, America is an open uh, society, and, and it's, it's, it's built on top of that. With my experience in upstate New York from uh, being a student to uh, entrepreneur and, 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 and business owner, I uh, also learned that it's a very generous society in America. We have given pledge we, uh, in, in US in business community, CEOs, uh, entrepreneurs, they, they donate their time, they donate their money, they do donate their expertise into the causes in so many different areas. But in the issue of refugees, we have, I have found out that we have less businesses and entrepreneurs are involved than any other areas. With that, I created Tent, and I spent most of my time engaging with UNHCR, going to the field, talking to the people, and with my experience of hiring refugees who settled in Idaho and upstate New York, having 30% of our, our workforce being from 11 different countries that working with me, building my business together in the factories, I can tell from my experience is the minute a refugee has a job, that's the minute they stop being a refugee. Integration is extremely important. These people are either brought by the governments or agencies into the cities and towns. As CEOs and business owners, we must open our doors just like with everybody else in the, in the community, but yet we must go extra mile to provide either transportation or language barriers or whatever they need to let them to be part of the society, part of the workforce. So TENT is created to help this, just like uh, Director General explained, this massive humanitarian crisis that we're facing uh, since World War II. And the intensity and uh, complexity is the, of the issue, we just cannot let only the governments and the NGOs to be involved with this issue. We have to bring the business community, entrepreneurs, and with that more broad uh, communities into this issue. And with that, we started Tent Pledge, and we ask other businesses to join this effort. And of course, some of them, just like Jim's uh, UPS, we're doing job work on this for a long, long time. Uh, so I'm happy to say we have um, more than 10 companies already joined this Tent Pledge that we are hoping to get many, many more, which I'm sure here at Davos, we already have a lot of commitments. Leading to humanitarian summit in Istanbul, we'll have many, many more companies and entrepreneurs joining this effort, be with the NGOs and governments and bring and, you know, uh, innovations, uh, uh, bring in-kind donations, and, and also break, break the barriers between the organizations and, uh, and NGOs to speed up more innovatively and help the, uh, this most uh, critical issue that we are facing with. I am encouraged with the discussions that are happening here in Davos. It's in the minds of everybody, you know, no matter where they come from. This really uh, inspired me. I'm going back being more hopeful. But everybody recognized that above in politics and, and, and security, all these things that we're discussing as businesses and, and entrepreneurs, if we come from the humanitarian side, from humanitarian perspective, we will find the solution easier and faster and more, more effective. Thank you, Hamdi. Uh, right over to you, Jim. Um, Hamdi mentioned it already, UPS has also been active in, in that area for a long time. You've and identified that as a, as a uh, part of your work uh, where you want to uh, invest and where you want to uh, be engaged. Share with us what is UPS doing uh, both in disaster response uh, but also in working with refugees? Well, I'd love to. I would say it would be appropriate to first thank Hamdi uh, for his leadership and the invitation to be here with you today because I think that's important for, for UPS and for me to represent 435,000 UPSers across the world to support this effort. Um, I think it's also important to understand refugees and the support of them at UPS is part of a broader program. Um, it's linked to our UPS Foundation, and we try and link our support to the largest UN agencies like UNHCR and then work with NGOs to complete the network of the support that we are we're looking to engage in. We do that generally through three work streams in preparedness, uh, urgency response, and then post-crisis recovery. 
We try and do it on a standby basis. We have a we, we modify and, and move it with our networks across the world, but that's a key for us to, is to always be on a standby basis because you never know when the next crisis or natural disaster is going to hit. Uh, and we believe we certainly have a role to play there. We did start in this area about three years ago, to be honest with you. Um, if you look at the, the refugee crisis, um, we believe we're in a very unique place to, to support this because it is it's a combination of, of assets that a company like UPS and others bring to it. We look at it at skills, resources, networks, and, and if we're in 220 countries across the world, which we are today with 435,000 UPSers, it is really an obligation. But these things become very local at the same time. It's not a – things that start out at a global level, they very quickly became, become local and to our employees as well, and I think that's the key for us. The foundation, as I said, has really four pillars it looks at. It looks at diversity and inclusion. We believe in that from our foundation. We believe in environment, volunteerism, and of course this is community safety, which is where humanitarian and this support of the refugee crisis comes into play here. So we, it's, it's A, the right thing to do. It's the right way for us to run our business. Um, our employees actually are, bi are our biggest advocates because uh, I started uh, breakfast this morning supporting uh, Gavi and the Alliance for the Vaccines, um, and it is amazing how our employees come around these urgent needs um, of the community. I was just in Brussels here recently, uh, a couple days before the, the WEF this, this, uh, this month and this year. And we have already in 15 countries, the UPS employees in Europe, of which they number about 60,000, already in 15 countries have put together their own program to support this outside this. And, the, you know, it really does, um, when, when your employees stand for this, it's much more than money oftentimes. It's more about leadership and it's, mm -hmm. about, it's about marshalling the support of the community and society. So we're, we're absolutely proud to be here. And again, thanks for all you've done to launch this and we're, we're proud to be part of the support with you. Thank you very much, Jim. Uh, Director General, uh, back to you. You have two shining examples from the private sector here next to you on the panel that are, that are doing their work and they're, they're carrying their weight. What would your message be to the remaining 1,498 business leaders here in Davos? Well, our position has been consistent that private sector is a natural partner, one of our most reliable partners, because these are the people who make it happen. We talk about the free flow of capital goods and services, but it takes people to do that. And the private sector knows where the gaps are, the skills gaps, the jobs gaps. They know what the inventories are. And they are all, in, they're all if, you, if you speak to them and try to do a partnership, as with UPS, they are ready to partner in trying to make this uh, whole – it's really – we're not talking about migration. Really. We're really talking about human mobility. This is a new world we're in but we still have policies that go back just after the Second World War, and that really has to change if we're going to manage the movement of people. And we really need more human mobility and less forced migration, which is what we're getting. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're grateful to be here with these two really shining examples and hope that uh, the 1,400, 1,500 who are here, that we, as, uh, as we were saying, that we can get more of them to enlist now to be engaged on the issue. Thank you. And uh, Jim Hamdi, uh, we don't only have the, the business leaders here, but also 40 heads of states and 300 ministers from the private sector. What's your wish list? What's your wish list to them? Um, you know, I, I wish that we have less bureaucracy. Um, and I wish that when we sit around the tables, you know, when we discuss the issue, uh, we come from a theoretic perspective, which you need it a little bit, but come to the action perspective and let's do something. You know, we entrepreneurs, you know, of course, we do meetings and, you know, committees and all that stuff, but we are known for, you know, make a decision and go for it and take risks sometimes. And, and, and this one is, is so here and so critical, and, and we have no luxury of losing any time, and it's so highly politicized in everybody's mind. We are looking for leadership from political uh, leaders because we are not politicians and we're not going to get into the politics of here because they do that best. Um, but at the same time, we'd like to engage and share our thoughts and ideas. And, and I think in this issue, we need to break the barriers and walls 
and we need to have a very direct communication. And so if we, if we can bring the, uh, the politi political arena and the NGOs, which they are doing fantastic job, and especially on the field when they are, you know, risking their lives uh, away from their families, uh, days and months and years, and they do that not because for the sake of having a job, they do that because they care and they love and they really, really know how to do it. We need to get them what they need faster, less, less bureaucratic, and at the same time, we need to hear them and implement the solution to them. So I'm hoping, and I saw some signs here in Davos uh, in the last two days, that I'm hoping that this this tragedy that we are facing, as bad as it is and as, 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 as we see and as we experience, is going to be an opportunity for us to make things better for future. Because that's how I see it in the business, and I know Jim is the feel the same way, is we see uh, troubles and, and problems as opportunity. Uh, of course, in the, in the issue of humanity, it's not, we can't look at it the same way as business, but if you look at it from the, from the perspective of solving it, it's an issue. Let's get, let's get our heads together and let's find a solution. And so we don't have to deal with this, you know, in this magnitude, uh, you know, in the future so our kids can have a better life in this world. Thank you very much, Hamdi. Jimmy, you want to add to that? Well, I just, you know, we, I'm just holding that uh, we put a report out every year called the logistics of caring. We bring it together and we, and we look at it through that lens. And, you know, my couple of days here at the Economic Forum this year, the, the, the word that keeps coming out to me every time is shared. <clears throat> Our economies are now moving to a more shared environment. Networks are moving to a more shared environment. Companies from Uber to the rest of, it's a sharing kind of world. And in my, in my mind, this type of situation, specifically the, the refugee crisis, is the ultimate opportunity to share. Um, and that includes governments, it includes the NG NGOs, the private sector employees. And, uh, and I think it, it does really represent um, the most humbling and, and, and at the same time exciting opportunity to share in probably the best cause we can have. So to me, I just think about it through this, this lens of sharing today. And, and hence, that's why UPS is part of it. Thank you very much. Um, I'm mindful of the time, and I know <coughs> that our panelists have to uh, move to the next session, but we still want to give the opportunity to open the floor for questions. Um, can I see a sign of hands? Uh, there is a question in the back. We have a microphone, please. Yes, hello. This question is for Mr. Ulukaya. If businesses want to get involved, how can they do so with your tent pledge? Is there a website? Is there Yes, of course, we have tent.org that they can uh, reach out to that. And of course, you know, um, from the business community, we are very close. So one phone call, one email will get a response from us immediately. Um, you know, I am, I am so blown away with the uh, first, you know, the pledges. And of course, Jim's leadership helped tremendously. But now we have UPS, LinkedIn, you know, uh, Airbnb, MasterCard, Johnson & Johnson, Western Union. I mean, these are amazing companies led by amazing people. And, and the list goes on and on and on. And, and some of them we're reaching out ourselves. And, and, and some of them are already doing jobs. So what we are trying to do is get our heads together so we can collaborate together as well. And I am hoping, not only in America, we're hoping, that in, in IKEA, for example, uh, we're hoping to get uh, entrepreneurs and businesses from the region as well you know, uh, from, from Middle East, from Turkey. I know I'm going to announce one from Turkey in the educational field, which he is extremely excited. He's one of the, uh, uh, you know, leading uh, education company. So I'm hoping that from the also from the, from the region to get more companies involved and get this voice louder. Thank you very much, Hamdi. If we don't have any more questions, uh, we will close the press conference here. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for watching. And a special thank you uh, to our panelists uh, for being here, but also for the great work you're doing there. Thank you very much. Thank you.